All right, so I start off the construction of this project by marking out the center braces. Once these center braces have been marked out, I take the wood over to the drill press to cut the holes into the wood. Once the holes had been finished being cut in the wood, I take the piece of wood over to the router table and put a slight round over edge on all of the holes. Once the center braces had been made correctly and all of the remaining wood for the project cut to the correct sizes, it was time to begin gluing and clamping this project together. I do this throughout the entire project and use it with a hammer to persuade the wood into the correct position. Once the glue in the boxes had time to dry, I mark out the center brace for where the baffle is going to go, making sure that it's not going to get in the way of the woofer or the tweeter. Likewise with the entire project, wood glue and clamps were used to hold this into position. I then took the face plates over to the router table to put a slight round over edge on the entire face. This gives a very nice look to the finished speaker box. Once the round over had been added to the faces of the enclosures, I went out to the backyard with my Jasper circle jig and routed out the holes for the speakers themselves. I cut out the holes for the terminals in the back of the box with a simple jigsaw. Once the terminal cup holes had been cut into the back of the wood and the speaker holes routed into the faceplate, it was time to begin gluing them on. Same process as always, wood glue and clamps. People always like to acknowledge the fact that I use a lot of clamps. I just like to be able to ensure that the wood is bonded correctly. And for the sake of adding some extra clamps, I figure why not. One thing I tried differently for this project was slightly oversizing the back and face plate of the enclosure. This way I could take it to a flush trim router bit to trim down the edges to make it much easier in the sanding stage.
Now onto the crossovers designed by 123 Toyed. Link to his channel will be in the video description and I thank him so much for helping me design the crossovers for this enclosure. If you're interested, go check him out because he teaches you guys how to build crossovers just like this. These make the finished speakers sound absolutely incredible and are the main ingredient to a nice sounding speaker. I glue the crossovers to a piece of cardboard and then hot glue them into the enclosure. This way it's still removable, but it's not likely to budge at all. I then do a rough fit of the drivers in the enclosure using a square to make sure the speaker screw holes are completely square with the enclosure itself. I then mark out the holes before drilling them out on my drill press. I then pre-drill the holes for the screws making sure the drill bit I use is slightly smaller than the thread of the screws so they bite into the wood. Once everything had been done in the construction phase, I take the enclosures outside into the backyard and use a 120 grit sanding disc on a random orbital sander to get the perfect finish on the outside of the enclosure. Once the construction of the boxes had been finished and they'd been sanded down to perfection, it was onto the painting stage where I used a satin clear coat to bring out some of the color in the wood. I apply one coat before sanding down the entire enclosures with 200 grit sanding paper on a sanding block. This way I can get rid of all of the fluff and fur in the wood before applying two more final coats. Now onto probably one of the most rewarding parts of a speaker build, that is wiring 123 Toids crossover into the terminal cups and up to the speakers.
have it, the finished build for the Dayton Audio Esoteric 7-inch drivers. I'd like to thank 123Toid yet again for helping me design the crossovers for this enclosure, as well as Parts Express massively for supplying the components for this build. With that being said, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this build video. If you want to see more like it, chuck a like on the video, subscribe to my channel because there's plenty more content like this on the way. With that being said, I hope you've enjoyed and I can't wait to see you guys in my next video where you'll be able to hear these speakers running with the entire system.